Greetings, and welcome to our video on graphical animation. In this video, I'm going to be showing you in general how animations work, and we're going to use that to construct a logic design and show you how we can actually implement animation in Python Graph. Basically, in this video, I'm going to take all the skills we learned this semester, so sequential, conditional, iterative logic, functional decomposition, algorithmic reasoning, and we're going to combine them all together to produce the ultimate demo, the bouncing ball. Yes, it is amazing. Now, the bouncing ball doesn't seem like much, but uh, there are a lot of steps involved. And once you understand how this works, you will understand how animations work in general on computers. Um, and I think it's a really great example. So why don't we just hop in? Animations in general are uh, basically an optical illusion. I remember being a kid and watching um, cartoons in the morning. We didn't have those fancy uh, uh, computer-generated animations. We had hand-drawn stuff. And as a kid, I'd watch this and be like, oh, nice drawing. Not realizing that a cartoon artist basically had to draw every single frame of this animation, and then they had to play all those images so it looked like the person's running. This person is not running. These are just a bunch of pictures that are being played to my brain so fast that I'm perceiving it as motion. So the same general idea applies in computer animation. To make something appear as if it's moving, I draw it, I erase it, I move it some specified amount, you know, some velocity in the x and y direction, I redraw it, and I repeat that process over and over. And if I can do that 30 to 60 times a second, your brain will perceive it as an animation. What I just showed you here is basically our high-level logic design. This is basically the steps of every animation. So when we're drawing our ball, what we need to keep track of is just where the ball is, how fast it's moving in each of the directions, and then each frame, all we're going to do is erase everything on the screen, draw the ball, update the location, and then update the screen so that everybody can see um, what we're drawing. Right? This essentially becomes our high-level functions. So animation is so cookie cutter. You know, every animation basically follows these same erase, draw, update steps that we actually produce for you in a template that has all the basic stuff for animations already done. So we import Python graph, we set the window title, this is the same as before. This is our animation loop. So this is a never-ending loop that essentially always erases, draws, and updates. All right? And then down over here, this update window, this is a Python graph thing you have to do. You basically have to tell Python graph, draw what we just drew on the screen so the user can see it. Most of our work is actually going to be up here. So we're not going to touch these bottom uh, lines too much. Here, though, we're going to go and add the specific code needed to erase, draw, and update everything. And pass, uh, for those of you who haven't seen this before, pass is just a, a command in Python that means do nothing. Uh, we put them here because every function has to have some code in them. And so while they're empty, we're just putting pass so that you know it does nothing, but that's okay. We'll replace it later on. So high level, what we're doing is we need to keep track of the ball's x and y location. We need to keep track of the ball's x and y velocity. In the erase function, we're going to clear everything from the screen. There's a Python graph function for that. For drawing, we're just going to draw the circle at the current location of the ball. So wherever ball x and ball y are. And again, Python graph function takes care of that for us. And then the update phase, all we're doing is we are adjusting the values of ball x and ball y by the x and y velocity. And if we do that, then up here when we draw, it will look like the ball is being drawn in a new location. All right? Here is the Python graph animation template. So if I go ahead and press play right now, you should see a blank screen. Uh, it looks blank. What's really happening is that it's continuously drawing the same thing over and over. Right now, it's, uh, it's not doing anything, but we'll fix that in a second. The first function that's always the easiest to implement is erase. So I'm just going to do Python graph.clear window. And then when I do this, I need to specify color. I will specify red. And when I do that, you will see that it's an all red screen. Uh, again, it looks like it's solid red, but really it's red, everything being erased over with red over and over and over. So 30 to 60 times per second. So I'm going to turn it white so it doesn't look like a Dracula film. All right. So again, it doesn't look like much is happening. And then up here in the initialized graphic variable section, we're going to create the variables we need to keep track of where the ball is and where it's going. So I'm going to just create a couple variables here, ball x, ball y, ball x velocity, and then ball y velocity. All right, uh, you'll notice I didn't put anything here. Uh, 
It would be nice instead of hard coding it and saying like it's always at 400, 400. It'd be nice to add a little bit of randomness in it so that the ball doesn't always do the same exact thing every time. To do that, I need some way to do random numbers. Fortunately, there is a function for that. So um, Python has a module called random, and these are two functions that random contains that allows you to generate either a random floating point number between 0 and 1 or a random integer between this number and this number here. Alright, so let's go ahead and use them. Uh, first thing I need to do is import random, so I'll just do that up here. And then, I, in ball x, I will say that it is random dot, and I will use random integer, and instead of it being just in the middle of the screen, I'll say it's anywhere between x equals 100 and 700. Just start it off there. Same thing here, right? Uh, that's a great place for y. So now you'll have an x and y. Somewhere on the screen there'll be a ball coordinate. Right? And then for the velocity, we'll do the other one. We'll say random dot random, And then this one generates a number between 0 and 1. So our balls may not move very fast in the beginning, but we will adjust that as time goes on. So if I have this, I press play. I shouldn't see anything going on right now, but if I was to go to variables, you'll see that I actually have a random x and y coordinate and a random x and y velocity. Okay. So now let's go ahead and draw our ball. So uh, we'll use Python graph dot draw circle. And then for, instead of the x and y coordinate being a number, so instead of doing this, I'm going to put the ball's x coordinate, which is stored in this, the ball x variable, the ball's y coordinate, which is stored in the ball y variable. Uh, I'm going to just give it some radius. Uh, let's try 25. All right, I'm going to set it to a blue ball, and then I'm going to let it be filled. All right. So if I was to run this right now, I should see a ball on the screen. And there it is. Doesn't do anything right now because we haven't implemented update, but there you go. And if I press, if I stop it and I press play again, it starts at a different location. So again, you're not, it's not really one ball. What you're seeing is the ball being drawn and erased over and over and over. It just, we do it so fast, it looks like it's just always sitting there. So now we're at the phase where we need to move the ball. So the way that we do this and we sh is that we just update the ball's x coordinate. And we do this by going ball x plus ball x velocity. So there's one last thing we want to talk about before we do this, uh, because if I was to run it right now, you would see that, yeah, I'll get an error, actually. And what's happening is, this variable here, called ball x, is what we call a global variable. A global variable is basically any variable that exists outside of a function. Every function can read a global variable, but you can't write to it unless you tell Python that you're explicitly doing that. So for example here, because we're just reading the current value of ball x, it had no problem drawing the ball at where ball x is. But if we want to update ball x, what we have to do is say global ball x. All right. And when we do this and I press play, we're basically telling Python ball x, I want to change its value and I'm referring to this ball x up here. All right. So when I press play, Ah, we got some motion. Awesome. Obviously, we want the ball to move in multiple directions. So I'll just go ahead and copy all this code. And then I will change the x's to y's. All right. Now, when I press play, now we have a ball that moves, right? And actually, we can do this. We can go up here to ball x velocity. And we can multiply it by some value. So now we... Where there's a bigger range of speeds, right? So now you should, there we go. So this is awesome. And then it's off the screen. Okay, so we haven't done bouncing yet, right? So again, uh, just a quick review. If I want to change a uh, global variable, I have to put this line. This is the magic line that tells Python we want to modify the global variable. So how do you make a ball bounce? All right, so let's talk about this. Our ball is moving right now with some sort of uh, x velocity and y velocity. So that's fine until it hits the wall. And what does it mean to hit a wall in this case? Well, it actually means that in this case for the vertical, we're talking about the wall being your y coordinate is bigger than the bottom of the screen, right? 
And then when that happens, what we need to do is flip the y velocity. So when we flip the y velocity, now we just multiply by negative 1. Now the ball, when we update it, will now go up. So it will look like it's bouncing. The same thing's going to happen when we hit here on the x side, right? Um, if the x coordinate, if, if the ball's x is bigger than the, the x width, then we know we've hit the right side. Then we need to multiply the x velocity by negative 1, so then now we start moving to the left. All right. So why don't we do this? So in the update function, we're going to update the location of ball x and ball y. And what we're going to do is instead of uh, just updating it, we're going to check to see if we hit the wall. So let's do x first. So check to see if we hit a wall on the x-axis. So that means we're hitting the left or the right wall. So I will check to see if the ball's x is less than or uh, 0 or the ball's x is greater than the width of our screen, which is 800, then all we need to do is take the ball x velocity and then multiply it by negative 1. And remember, ball x velocity is actually up here, so it's a global variable. So I need to add here ball x velocity and tell Python that we want to update these variables. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and run it now. I'm actually going to comment out the ball y so we only have horizontal motion. So what we should see is that as soon as the center of the ball goes past the right side of the screen, we should see the x velocity of the ball flip. And we do. Oh, come on. That's kind of cool right now. All right. So the same thing's going to happen if we do the y's, right? So I need to change all these y's. And by the way, this is why we set the, uh, the dimensions of the screen to be 800, 800, so that we can copy and paste code pretty easily. And I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this code here. So now we're moving in the x and y direction. And if we're ever past the left or right, or here, check to see if we hit a wall on the y-axis. So this is top and bottom. So if I'm ever less than 0, I've hit the top of the screen. If I'm greater than 800, I've hit the bottom of the screen. So now, right, that's pretty cool. So we have a bouncing ball. Just by looking at this, I'll let the ball go, you can see each phase of the animation process. In the erase phase, we cleared the entire screen. On the draw phase, we drew the ball at wherever the x coordinate currently is. And then in the update phase, what we're doing is we're essentially updating by the velocity and checking to see if we're hitting a wall. All right, so it, we tested that it hit all of them. We can check it to see if it hits the top, but it's going to work. So actually, we want to be crazy about it. Uh, let's get that ball moving. There we go. Isn't this satisfying? OK. So that's it. That's all you need to know about animation. Just by going through the erase, drawing, and update phases, we are able to make something appear as if it's moving when it really isn't. All right? So that's all there is in this video. Um, gee, it would be cool if we could have multiple walls bouncing at the same time, wouldn't it? Huh. I wonder if we'll ever discuss that. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care.